Welcome to the Smack Studio Editor. This video will be a brief tour of the user interface where you can find everything and hopefully get you making a character real fast. So to start, you'll see this kind of main central area and I'm gonna begin by showing off some camera controls. If you just use the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in and out. And if you use the WASD keys on your keyboard, you can move around and pan the camera. So between using both of them, you can get exactly to where you need to go. Currently, we are in the 2.5D camera mode. There's also a 3D camera mode. So if I select that, that unlocks an option to be able to rotate the camera as well. I'm doing that by right-clicking and holding down and then moving my mouse to rotate the camera. I can use that in juxtaposition with the WASD keys, and that is giving me complete control over where my camera is. In fact, there's another view, which is this 2D view, and this gives you just a flat-on view, which is nice for pixel-perfect editing, which we'll go over later. So back to the 2.5D view. On the top, you'll see this animation timeline. And here, you can see we're on the idle animation on the left here. And if I click play, you can see a full looping rotation of this animation. Let's say we were to go to a different animation on the left here. I'll select victory, and we'll click play on that. As you can see, we'll go through the entire animation and show the victory. So there it is. And uh, I'm going to go back to idle here. This top area, you can see there's several layers here, which we'll go into in a bit. On the right, you can add more content to this. So let's say, for example, you wanted to add a sound or you wanted to add a, another individual sprite. This is the area where you would do that. And you'll be using the timeline across the top here and the content area here a lot if you want to add or remove or uh, replace things. Reviewing the timeline here, you're going to see several layers. And every single animation, for the most part, is going to have an animation rig. And this is because this is essentially your character. Let's see what happens when you toggle the visibility of that rig. You can see the entire character disappears, which is expected in this case. Up here, you can see there's a hurt boxes layer. This indicates where your character is vulnerable to attacks, and you can adjust that simply by clicking it and dragging these values. Uh, if I want to add, let's say, a hurt box like from an attack, I'll show you a different animation that will demonstrate that. Let's use side strong, for example. If I click and drag, you'll see that at this point in the animation, there's a red square, and that just means this is where the attack happens. So if this box hits another player, that will cause the damage. And you can also click this to adjust those properties. So that gives you some idea of the different layers. You also have this sprites layer. You have this actions layer, which speaks to some more advanced aspects of the, the move. And, and here, if I click play, here's an, uh, an effect action that you can see. This timeline won't be able to preview everything, so certain sound effects and certain effects won't play in real time. You'll have to go in and manually select that yourself. But for the most part, you can see the animation in action and make changes. Going back to our idle animation, let's say I wanted to add another layer. Well, I can simply click this button here to select a new timeline, and I'm going to select, let's say, a grab locator. For the purposes of this, this grab locator is only really helpful insofar as you're creating a grab or throw attack, but just for versatility, we're going to show this off. I'll click new here, and here we have our grab locator, and we have our grab locator timeline. All right, so that's, that's pretty neat. That's how that works. Let's say I wanted to delete this timeline. To do that, all I have to do is select the timeline and select this trash can icon, and that will delete the layer. So let's say you're at a point with your character where you want to test them out. Many of you will be using a controller, so Let's try using the test play section down here, but before we do that, we're gonna to wanna to click this controller icon and then press A or the main attack button on the controller that you like to use, which I will do now. It detects the controller. So now I will do a test play. So let's click test play and see what happens. All right, I can now move around and play as my character. And this is nice for testing out your character's moves and there's a stationary character here, as you can see, this is a, grand bag and your ult your ultra status will always be full so you can use it anytime you'd like ultra is the attack and special button pressed at the same time very nice and this gives you plenty of space and room to test your character out when you're finished with that you can click exit test play here and it'll bring you back to the editor lastly you'll notice a few settings here on the top left that are editor preferences here you can do things like turn off the 
hue cycle if you'd like to just pick one that suits your fancy or you can select the saturation of that color or lack thereof the light intensity and you can also enable the lovely music completely up to you so there you have the smack studio editor hopefully this was helpful and hope to see your creations real soon